Are you a business owner or entrepreneur who's had great success in the business world? And now you want to launch a speaking career to share your message with the world. If that's you, then listen up. 25-year speaking industry veteran Brett Ridgway has released his latest special report, Three Key Things Entrepreneurs Must Master to Build a Profitable Speaking Business. To pick up your copy, go to brettridgeway.com forward slash freebie. Welcome to the Spotlight on Speaking Show with Brett Ridgway, where you'll learn the keys to building a profitable speaking business from speaking industry pros. Each week, we interview a great guest who will share his or her speaking journey, identify what their keys to success have been, and highlight some critical mistakes they've made along the way that you'll want to avoid. Be sure to visit our website at spotlightonspeaking.com. And while you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, sit back, tune in, and get ready to meet this week's guest. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Spotlight on Speaking show. I'm your host, Brett Ridgway, and I'm excited to have as my guest today, LaRon Barton. LaRon is a writer, author, and speaker that has great stages all around the world. He's a three-time TEDx speaker who has given talks at universities and companies, but also has a stutter. LaRon has been stuttering since the age of six. With his handicap, he often sat in silence due to being afraid of ridicule. People made fun of him and the way he spoke. It was not until LaRon was asked to speak in front of an audience that he faced his fear. In this episode of our show, we're going to talk about having a stutter, how LaRon used his fear to fuel his speaking, the business of speaking, and suggestions for up-and-coming speakers. LaRon, welcome to the Spotlight on Speaking show. Thank you very much for having me, Brett. I really appreciate it. So, certainly you deal with something that most speakers never deal with. So let, let's go back into your journey a little bit, Laron, and talk about what was the pull or the push or whatever it was that got you up in front of that room for the first time. Uh, Brett, that's a really interesting and really good question. For me, speaking was, it always kind of came relatively easy. I mean, being able to express a point. I mean, being able to uh, illuminate on a subject and sort of expound on things. I mean, I'm, I'm at my core, I'm a writer. So, you know, writing is my favorite thing uh, that I do. It's the best thing that I know how to do. And I just felt like speaking kind of grew out of that. I mean, I'm a very inquisitive person. I love a great conversation and I just, I love listening to people. So I guess that if you combine all of those together, that's what kind of pushed me into speaking. Um, you know, I, I started out as we would we, do uh, spoken word poetry. You know, I haven't done spoken word in a while, but, you know, getting up in front of a crowd, uh, you know, reciting poetry, it could be a little uh, scary to some, but for me, it was really exciting. And from there, I just wanted to, I just wanted to keep doing it, Brett, you know, and um, yeah, that's what, uh, that's, uh, that's what got me there. How many years are we going back, Laurent, to that first public speaking experience? Wow. So the first, so I, I believe the very first time that I, that I gave a talk was possibly in 20, say 2017. It was uh, when I was living in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I used to go to a church called Glide Church. For, for, the, for those who don't know what that is, it's a world famous uh, non-denominational church. Uh, it welcomes everyone, black, white, gay, straight, short, tall. And it's a very inclusive environment. And so I was a part of a racial justice group. I was actually the, the co-chair. And I was asked to give a quick five minute talk about racial injustice from the perspective of the black man in America. And so the first time I gave the talk, Brett, I bombed so hard. Like, I was, I mean, I stuttered. I was just like, I was absolutely horrible. And so I never forget this day. As I'm walking off stage, Michael Franti from uh, Spearhead said, hey, bro, you did a good job. And I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, I suck. So 
you know, um, I guess like later that day or a couple of days after I told myself, I was like, man, maybe this public speaking thing just ain't for you. But I've always been the type of person where I'm not going to let someone beat me. You know, I'm, I'm not going to let something uh, beat me down, defeat me. And so another opportunity came. And Brett, what I did was I practiced, I practiced, I practiced. Like I must have practiced that speech over and over and over. And so by getting that second chance, I was able to give a better presentation, give a better talk. And that just gave me a lot of confidence. Now, the fact that I have a stutter definitely was a deterrent to getting up on stage. But, you know, what I realized is like, that's just another obstacle, man. I mean, it's just something that I'm going to have to deal with. Like, I have a stutter. It's not going away. It's a part of me. So, you know, we're going to have to just roll on with it. So, yeah, as you mentioned, Leron, you're a writer primarily. So, and I noticed in your, you know, your bio that you've written for a number of different publications and venues yes, and all that stuff. So when you speak, what is your go-to topic when you're speaking on stage? So uh, interesting question. So my most famous talk is my first TEDx talk. It's how how I overcame the fear of my stutter. Uh, okay. It's, you know, it kind of just blew the doors open for me. Nowadays, I talk primarily about race. You know, I, I talk about mass incarceration. Um, I also talk about the power of, of sharing your story. I think that as a writer and as a speaker, one of my responsibilities is to encourage and help other people tell their story, help other people get a platform. Because I believe that when everyone has a chance to talk about themselves and where they're from, the world becomes more colorful, if if you will. It becomes more more well more more well rounded. No pun intended. But yeah, so you know those I would say like those three topics. All right. So let's dive into the whole area of stuttering a little bit more because yes, there are certainly people out there in the world that know they have a message they should share with the world, but they don't know how to overcome that fear of speaking because they have a stutter. So how did you overcome it? Well, I don't, I have never over overcame my stutter because my stutter will not go away. So I've been stuttering since, since the age of five or six, right? You mentioned uh, there's people around the world that stutter. There's about 75 million people around the world that stutter. So that's 1% of the population. And there's there's a myriad of reasons why people stutter. My stutter, from what I've been told, uh, came because of there's there was an issue with uh, with my tongue and and the skin connected some some something like that. But my father stutters and my brother stutters. I happen to have, I believe, a more pronounced stutter than you know out of the three of us. And so I never overcame the stutter. I just overcame the fear of stuttering because, Brett, it doesn't matter what I do. I'm going to stutter regardless, right? So you have this almost certainty in front of you. You know that it's going to happen. So are you going to let that stop you from doing what you want to do? It's like we're all going to die, right? Yeah. You know, death is certain. So if you have that certainty, is that going to stop you from living? So the key for me is to not worry about the ridicule and not worry about me stuttering. Like I, I believe that I was so worried about stuttering that I stopped myself from speaking out on things that I should have uh, spoken out on, spoken out, I'm sorry, or that opportunities that I should have taken. And to be honest with you, also, Brett, like people really didn't care. You know, like if 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 we got down to the to the brass tacks of it, like I cared more about it than people did. And that was my perception is people. I was like, oh, my God, yo, you know, someone's going to laugh at me. I mean, yeah, you know, I got laughed at. Cool in the gang. You know, people may you may funny me, you know, people smile like uh, like a little giggle when I stutter. But I mean, look, look at what I'm doing now. So I credit that to, I mean, obviously to God, but also to not letting that stop me and just realizing that it is what it is. You know, we're all not perfect. You know, we all have something that we're dealing with and it's up to us to not let that 
stop us from living our lives. So, Laurent, do you consider yourself to be primarily a keynote speaker, or do you also sell from the platform or just use it for business building purposes, or is it all about keynoting? Um, for me, I, I would probably say uh, I'm primarily a keynote speaker. I also do workshops um, as well as um, I, uh, I'm i getting and doing fireside chats. Uh, earlier this month for Black History Month, I was a part of a fireside chat. That was that that was really awesome. And next month, I'm going to be doing a fireside chat at South by Southwest. So I'm really excited about that opportunity. Wow, so as a keynote speaker, Laron, how do you measure whether your speech, your talk has been a success or not? Very good question. So I'm what I would I'm what I would call more of an interactive speaker, right? So if you listen to like a lot of keynote speakers, they just they just talk at you. They're just like, oh, and and, you know, if that's your thing, cool. You know, if you're effective, great. But I like to get the crowd involved. Hey, you know, you know, Brett, what's your thoughts on on this? Or, you know, and, you know, do you have any um, do you have any um, experience on, on, on this? I like to hear from from everyone. So it's a keynote, but it's also kind of a uh facilitator in, in in a way. And I think that the way that I measure success is that the feedback that I get after, you know, I mean, not every, like every speaker, like no speaker has a hundred percent success rate. You know, I, I think that there's been, I can definitely think off the top of my head, there's, there's, there's been two speeches that were not, that were not received while they were like, Oh my God, I, you, you, you're like, why do we hire this kid? What's going on? But it's like, like you know everyone's not gonna bat a thousand man and you just have to just sort of push on all right so as a keynote speaker give me your three best tips for being successful as a keynote speaker okay number one for me uh and you know these are things that have worked for Laurent barton i don't know if if that'll work for anyone else preparation so i prepare a lot like i never wing things when it when it comes to talks because when i've done that brett i've came off sloppy so what i want to do is i want to know as much about the subject as much about the uh where i'm where i'm speaking uh you know what you know what type of uh topic uh how they uh you know just the crowd, the uh, you know, the you know, the the environment. Uh, I like to talk pretty slow, and I'm just myself. You know, I'm, I don't try to be anyone else. Um, I I I think it's really important that we embrace who we are. A lot of times, people feel like, oh, I'm supposed to talk this way. I'm supposed to stand like this. Uh, my tone is supposed to be like this. Um. You know, I, I have to come off as very stiff and stodgy and professional. And I'm just like, look, you're going to do your very best when you are comfortable with who you are. So if you are in a comfort zone, it's like when you listen to basketball players, like, for example, one of my favorite players of all time is uh, Allen Iverson. And in the 2001 finals uh, championship, um, you know, like I said, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big Iverson guy. 2001 championship of Philadelphia 76ers, Los Angeles Lakers. He had an amazing game. And he said, man, the the bucket felt felt like the ocean, like I couldn't miss. And that's because he was comfortable. He was in his rhythm. So he was just being him. You know, Kyrie Irving said the same thing. The uh, 2016 uh, Golden State Warriors, Cleveland Cavaliers, you know, he was just, he felt good. So, I believe that when you are comfortable, when you are being yourself, you will feel good and you will be a very, um, what is the term? Uh, you will be a very potent speaker. All right. So I've got some more ground I want to cover with you, Laurent. But before we do, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. Are you a business owner or entrepreneur who's had great success in the business world? And now you want to launch a speaking career to share your message with the world. If that's you, then listen up. 25-year speaking industry veteran Brett Ridgway has released his latest special report, 
three key things entrepreneurs must master to build a profitable speaking business. To pick up your copy, go to breadridgeway.com forward slash freebie. And we are back with my guest, Laron Barton. So, Laron, one of my favorite questions I always ask my guest is, okay, time to bear your soul a little bit here, buddy, and, and share a mistake you made along the way of your speaking path that maybe was embarrassing at the time, a little red-faced, but a valuable lesson was learned, and it would be something that you would highly advise an up-and-coming speaker not to do. Yeah, um, man, there's the, there's been a couple of things. Um I guess for me, uh, the expectation of the of the talk, right? You know, what are you supposed to deliver? Uh, what is this talk for? Um, I did a talk for a wellness organization, and I was actually contracted. I'm sorry, contracted through them to work with another company, and I thought that the talk was this but they wanted it to be that and i was interrupted halfway through the talk okay so when are we going to get to this though and i was like okay you know and i thought that i i, I thought that i did well but um wasn't wasn't the case so be very clear on what you're supposed to do as far as what what the talk is supposed to be what the uh what the client wants you to deliver and just have just have clarity about it, you know, because you 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 don't want to walk into a situation where you're presenting this and and they want that. Also, uh, business wise, man, I I I would say um, be very clear on what you want in the speaker contract. You know, if you're working with a net thirty, if you're working with payment is due right after the talk. Um, if you want certain things such as promotion if you want uh testimonials like you know if you want a deposit all that has to be done before the talk so that was something that i learned early i'm like okay my business isn't isn't right you know the client hasn't paid me in 30 60 days i'm like what's going on and, you know, and, and I'm having to like nag the client like, hey, you know, I haven't, I haven't been paid. What's going on? I'm like, you know, I've done my work. And another thing, another third thing. And and I, I didn't mind this at first, but in retrospect, I wouldn't do it again. It's like if you're going to go over your time, make sure you're paid for your time. Brett, I'll give you an example. And, and, and again, you know, I had a great time with this with this client. It was a university and it was supposed to be a one hour talk it ended up being two and a half hours. I only got paid for one hour. So it's like, you know, you have to have have boundaries and say, hey, you know, if I'm going to go over, then you're going to pay me for this. Well, the question you know, is, did you, go, did you go over because you weren't efficient on your time or because they kept throwing additional questions at you that caused it to expand? You know what? It was one of those things where it's like the conversation was so good, right, that I just... I just expand like the time it, it just went from an hour, hour and a half. And I didn't mind. But when I talked to a colleague of mine who's much more seasoned in speaking, she got <laughs> she laughed at me and she got a little mad. She was like, Laurent, they uh, they got way more than uh, than what they paid you for. Why did you do that? And I'm like, I just you know, but I was green, you, you know, now. Now I wouldn't do that though. Now I'm like, okay, listen, if I'm going to go over, then you're going to have to pay me an, an additional. So when it comes to speaking, you have to treat it like a business. Like this is a business. This is not, you know, charity. I mean, even when you do uh, what I call pro, uh, pro bono, you know, you still have to get compensated some way for it. I mean, there's just the business side, Brett. I can go on and on about that. But, you know, that's stuff that I've learned. All right. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes now, Laurent, to tell people a little bit more about what all you do and how they can get involved in your world if they so choose. And I think I saw something about you. Maybe you have uh, something new offer in terms of helping people get a TEDx talk ready. One hundred percent. So um, again, my my name is Laron Barton. I'm a writer, author, speaker. Um, you can reach me at www.laronbarton.com. Um, I am a keynote speaker. I'm a facilitator. I'm a workshop uh, facilitator. I I also 
do fireside chats. I talk about race, mass incarceration, the power of telling your story, being black in tech, as well as stuttering. I am also a TEDx speaker coach. So I have done three TEDx's and I've also been on an organizational team for a TEDx. So I've been on both sides of the aisle. What I do is I help people get TEDx's as well as I help people write the speeches, come up with the concepts, rehearse the speech and also market the TEDx. In addition to that, Brett, I'm also a uh, speech writer. So if you need help writing a speech, if you, if you have a keynote, if you want to do a fancy uh, uh, fancy pants toast, I'm your man. So, yeah. All right. Well, Ron, I want to thank you so much for being my guest today on this episode of the Spot On Speaking Show. I wish you continued success in everything that you're doing. For all my listeners out there, thank you so much for joining us today. As always, I wish you the greatest of success in all that you do. And may this year be your greatest year yet. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Brett. This has been the Spotlight on Speaking Show with Brett Ridgway. Be sure to join us every week as we interview speaking industry pros and have them share their best tips for building a profitable speaking business. Until next week, thank you for tuning in. And remember to visit our website at SpotlightOnSpeaking.com so you can enjoy even more great episodes like this one. While you're here, be sure to subscribe via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Spotlight on Speaking Show. Until then, our sincere best wishes to you for the greatest of success as you work to build your own profitable speaking business. Thank you.